Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat fascinating concept when it comes to the natural world. The concept of invisible boundaries. Not political borders drawn by humans, but instead these really bizarre invisible lines that seem to separate the distribution of animal species in certain locations on Earth. Even in places where there doesn't seem to be anything physical present. And to be more specific, we're going to discuss the concept of faunal boundaries. And this recent study by Javier Montenegro, you can find in a description, that accidentally discovers a new one that seems to apply to at least one unusual species of jellyfish. But also probably a lot of other animals too. And so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail. But first let's discuss some of the more well-known faunal boundaries that have been studied for many years. And one of them you might be familiar with already. The famous Wallace Line. A line that carves itself through Indonesian archipelago, delineating a stark difference between Asian and Australian wildlife. And this boundary was discovered back in 1859 by the British naturalist Alfred Russell Wallace. And interestingly, this line becomes visible geographically if we actually look at the continental shelf contours because this is all the result of the ocean levels being much lower before. During Pleistocene, the ocean levels were up to 120 meters or 400 feet lower. And we know this based on a lot of previous studies on global climate history. But even during this time, Asia and Australia never united. And so for approximately 50 million years, there was always deep water separation between two continental shelves, creating a major barrier for all of the flora and fauna. But because the ocean levels have risen now, we don't really see the line itself, but the effects of this line are present because the fauna on the left side are different from the right side. And interestingly, this region does contain at least one more line, known as the Weber's line, mostly running through the transitional area, tipping the point between the dominance of species for Asian versus Australasian origin. But in this case, this is technically a physical barrier that once existed on a planet a long time ago. But this new study examines something a little bit more unusual. A mysterious barrier not on land, but instead in the deep ocean. And here our story starts with this unusual creature, known as Bortanema brucei, a very common midwater arctic hydrozoan that's usually approximately 3 cm across and looks like a very very beautiful semi-transparent bell, sometimes containing blue and white hues inside. But what's particularly distinctive about this particular hydrozone, or this jellyfish, is something present on top of its bell. It seems to have a knob-shaped process that's going to become important in a few seconds. Now most of the time we find these in the Arctic, but sometimes these jellyfish also seem to find themselves in the Atlantic Ocean, but predominantly at very deep depths, anywhere from 900 to 2600 meters. So it actually thrives in very cold, very dark and high pressure environments, which is why it's extremely unlikely to find them anywhere in the shallow waters. But that's actually where our mystery begins. Within the subspecies Bartinema brucei elinore, there are actually two distinct shapes, two morphologies. Some of these individuals have a very characteristic knob-shaped structure on their hood. It's particularly visible in this image right here. But some of them don't. Their hood seems to be very smooth. And for the longest time it was assumed that these were two different species, but turns out that these are actually basically cousins. And so here, genetic analysis of these jellyfish revealed that despite their obvious physical differences, both knobbed and unknobbed forms belong to the same genetic lineage. In other words, it's the same species, with just a minor difference. But things do get super complicated once you look at their distribution across the world. Because here, jellyfish with a knob can be found in the deep oceans all across the planet most of the oceans and most of the latitudes. So basically here we're talking about some kind of a global traveler. But strangely enough, not the unknobbed jellyfish. Or I guess the smooth jellyfish. They've never been found anywhere south of 47 degrees north latitude, representing an extremely specific line, suggesting some kind of an unusual semi-permeable funnel boundary. And though in the Arctic regions we do find both of them, they basically coexist. Only the smooth version, or the unknobbed version, seems to be confined to the Arctic Ocean. But I guess the question is, okay, so why is this important and why does it matter? Or I guess more importantly, why does this barrier even exist? Well here one hypothesis is that, for some reason this unusual knob might offer some kind of a selective advantage against predators. Or in other words, for some reason, 
in the much warmer waters south of the Arctic Ocean, having this knob prevents you from being eaten. In this case this would be a classical evolutionary pressure at play. On top of this, the North Atlantic Drift or the North Atlantic Current possibly acts as a kind of a barrier as well, preventing the smooth jellyfish from crossing for reasons that are still not certain. But because this area usually contains a mixture of different types of species, and here we have different environments and different conditions meeting and mixing, here this might also form some kind of a natural dividing line for a lot of other species beyond this jellyfish. With additional explanations, also suggesting possibly some kind of a competition with species that might be present here. For example here there's a sudden abundance of certain other jellyfish, like Solmissus you see right here, that seem to be just a little bit better at outcompeting the smooth jellyfish compared to the knobbed ones. What exactly why is of course uncertain. But that's not really the main point. The main point is that this bizarre new discovery of this very strange new barrier highlights how little we know about the deep ocean and how little we understand about marine life living in these regions. As a matter of fact, the presence of this line does imply that a lot of other species are affected by this, but also suggests the presence of other faunal barriers in various locations in the oceans we've never known about before, with this overall idea now being referred to as mesopelagic barrier hypothesis. But here this is of course quite a contrast to the famous Wallace line, and that's because the Wallace line seems to show an exact location and seems to present us with extremely different fauna. For example, the Makassar Strait between Borneo and Sulawesi and the Lombok Strait between Bali and Lombok are some of the most extreme examples on the planet. Here with a distance of just 35 kilometers or 22 miles, we actually find entirely different species on both sides. And here we're talking about both mammals and birds. But once again this line seems to correspond to a deep water channel that acted as a profound geographical separator, specifically the Sunda Shelf and the Sahul Shelf as you can see in this image. And so here in the west, on the Asian side, you can find a lot of different placental mammals, such as for example apes, different types of cats, elephants, monkeys and rhinos, but practically no marsupials. But in the east, on the Australian side, you do find a lot of marsupial species, and even animals like monotremes and native rodents. But I guess what's even stranger is that even birds seem to adhere to this line, they don't really like to cross it. With the other important line in this case being the Weber's line, also known as the Pelsenier's faunal balance, that represents a kind of a tipping point or a faunal balance where there seem to be two types of fauna equally mixed. And so it would be really interesting to find out if something similar exists in the oceans. But even though today scientists understand this line pretty well, it's this newly discovered ocean barrier that seems to be a little bit more mysterious. Especially because here we know this was shaped by millions of years of continental drift and of course sea level changes. But the newly discovered enigmatic barrier in the deep North Atlantic, though possibly the result of the North Atlantic current, is still a little bit mysterious. And this serves as a powerful reminder of how environmental conditions, geological history and even oceanography profoundly shape the distribution of various types of life on our planet. And also highlight how what seems to be continuous in our minds may not be a continuous environment for various fauna living inside. And so the open ocean in this case is maybe not so open for life. It does seem to contain somewhat subtle but insurmountable divides. But right now this has only been confirmed for these very specific jellyfish. And though it does serve as a testament for the incredible complexity and hidden worlds deep within our oceans, this is just the first of many future studies that are probably going to be tackling this in more detail. And so once we discover something else about these beautiful jellyfish, or once the scientists discover another faunal boundary somewhere out there, we'll come back and discuss this more in some of the future studies. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining the channel membership that grants you early access and a few other things. Or maybe by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.